Would you look on the other side and tell them as loud as you can, there are no chains holding me. Blessings and greetings, everyone. This is Bishop Darius Nixon, and I want to welcome you to Sunday Live. You're joining the Inner City Church. You know, despite the rhetoric that's going around in society today, the church remains one of the most important entities for lives all over the world. It is the sounds of Zion. That's what we're bringing to your personal space today. Prayer, praise, preaching. Your life is getting ready to be impacted like you have never experienced before. I don't care how far you have gone in life and how, how stretched you really feel, how bad things may even be turning out and how much trauma you've actually experienced. The presence of the Lord, there's a great relief in the presence of the Lord. And that's what I want you to lock in. That's right, lock in and experience the presence of the Lord like never before. Now, I don't wanna just offer you a church experience today. I want to offer you an opportunity to become a part of our church. That's right. Do you not know that you can now join our ministry virtually? All you have to do is text the word census to the number that is on your screen right now, 855-247-4676. And when you do that, you'll receive all of the forms that you can fill out. And it's really a simple and easy process. And we want to be able to welcome you and make you a great addendum to our church family. The body of Christ at large is growing. And I don't want you to get confused. God is still on the throne and he is yet expanding his kingdom. If you are a backslider today or you are in need of salvation, I want you to follow the prompting that's on the screen right now. Text salvation to that number. We're going to get you into the kingdom of God today. That's right. It is time for you to make your way into the body of Christ. Be included. Today is your day for a turnaround. It's your day for a breakthrough. It's your day for deliverance. It's your day for healing. So wherever you are, whether you're at work, whether you're commuting, whether you're at home, Regardless to where you are, I want you to be committed to locking in right now. That's right. Put those locks in the comment section right now. I want you to lock in as we prepare to enter into the sanctuary to experience God like we never have before. And while I would love for you to join me in the in-person, I want to guarantee you that watching virtually will just about feel like you're in the sanctuary with us. All right, enough talking. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let's go in and let's go up in God. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What could have been on his mind? The disciples who were missing in action. What could have been on his mind? Judas who betrayed him for the price of a happy meal. What could have been on his mind? Peter who denied him three times. Yet when he should have been thinking about the nails in his hand, he was thinking about me. It's good to know that when your back is up against the wall, you got somebody you can call on. Pilate was guilty, but Jesus let it go. The disciples were guilty, but Jesus let it go. Peter was guilty, but Jesus let it go. The soldiers were guilty, but Jesus let it go. But I <laughs> but I, but I, I was guilty, but Jesus, he let it go, say yeah, say yeah. Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. I didn't give you my topic. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you've 
been on his mind. What is it? What is men that thou art mindful of him? Of the son of men that thou visiteth him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor and didst set him over the works of the hand you been on his mind. Three men on a cross, two men with sin in them, one man with sin on him. I'll say it again. Two men with sin in them, one man with sin on them. One is rejecting him while the other is reaching for him. I don't hear nobody in here. Anybody in here ever knew who God was, but you got caught in it. Jesus looks at him and says today not tomorrow not yesterday not a week from now but shake your neighbor by the head and say neighbor I got a prophetic word for you today you shall be in paradise shake somebody by the head say I've always been on his mind Lord remember me on the outset the utterance from this cross seems somewhat offensive talking to black people now you wouldn't dare call your mother Jesus to me. While he's dying, lower your tone, while he's dying. <laughs> he stops dying long enough to reconcile his relationship. He says, I can't die without fixing my relationship with my mother behold thy son now listen to me he did not call her woman out of disrespect someone follow me he called her woman out of anonymity he knew that he was being persecuted and he didn't want to bring any attention to who his mother was I see your colors I see your titles I see your positions and I see all of the accolades but I need you to do what Jesus did. And this is the subject of my sermon. Go fix your family. But when he died, she was the first person to prayer. Go to Acts chapter one and she was in the high prayer room because she found her place. Because she was reconciled back to her son she no longer took advantage of the relationship, but said, I need what he had. And while they were in the upper room, the Bible said there came a sound. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. This is the last call on this side of the cross. So I just want to ask 50, I know I'm Baptist, I, I know I'm Baptist, but I'm, I'm hanging with a church of God in Christ, and I'm apostolic, I, I just want to say, is there anybody who knows how to praise the Lord? Shout yeah! Oh, yeah. Now, when I look at the text tonight, I, I, this afternoon, I want to make an argument that what we see is a rhetorical question. Because, in fact, why would Jesus be asking a question he already knew the answer to? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My daddy had to tell me, he said, son, sometimes uh, even though I'm your father, I've also got to be your disciplinarian. He said, because if I don't put my hands on you now, later on down the road, somebody else is going to put their hands on you. Some NYPD 
be police officer, some correction officer, somebody else. So he said, I love you enough that even though I'm your father, I got to discipline you every now and then. Where my father is looking on and through my blurred, bloody vision, I look up and behold and see my hero, my father, who has been there with me watching as I go through the ups and downs of life. He was there when I almost got kicked out of school. He was there when I got in trouble. But yet in this moment, for some reason, as I'm looking through my bloody, blurred vision, my father who was there watching as they performed surgery on my eye with the blood running down, all of a sudden I looked up and my father had turned his back. Jesus was hanging on the cross up. You do know what happened, don't you? Um, when the weight of the world uh, and the sins of humanity, um, they had fallen on our Savior Jesus the Christ. Um, and you know what happened, don't you? Um, the Father, just like my Father, um, said, I gotta turn my back um, because if I keep on watching um, what you're going through, uh, I don't know if I can help myself, uh, but I might intervene uh, but I'm so glad uh, that God said uh, that he loved us enough uh, to turn his back uh, on his only begotten son uh, as he bore uh, the weight of the world uh, but I'm so glad uh, he was willing to turn on Jesus uh, so he could turn to me uh, so he could look out for me uh, so he could take care of me uh, so I gotta tell him thank you for thought this afternoon he had to get thirsty look at your neighbor say he had to get thirsty God is omniscient all knowing God is omnipresent everywhere at all times God is omnipotent all powerful when you deal with the likeness of man this refers not only to Jesus being made in the visible likeness of men but also in the human likeness of men in other words when Jesus appeared on this earth he came in the actual form of man and was just like man in every way he is there on the cross now if he's divine why don't he take himself off the cross and save himself but if he is divine then he ought to show the power he has like God that is to escort one into paradise so he says to the guy on the left he says today you should be with me in paradise in other words showing his humanity you're human then you have to experience things that I experience on the earth and so he had to get thirsty on the cross because him being thirsty on the cross signified to the world that he is just as human as you and I mm -hmm. he had to get thirsty because now I know he felt exactly what I felt somebody ought to open your mouth and think Somebody shout hallelujah. He had to get thirsty. He had to do it. He was human just like you and I. I need somebody. Loose your praise. Open your mouth and say he had to get thirsty. Say yeah. It is here at a hill that the amaranthine God, that word amaranthine literally means he who is immortal, he who is perpetual, he who is eternal. He who is self-sufficient and self-contained. He who needs nothing because everything he needs is inside himself. Three times in the scriptures you will find the word, it's finished. Creation, God rests on the seventh day, it's finished. In the book of Revelation, when God said, I'm going to have a new heaven and a new earth, it's finished. 
And now Jesus cries out, it's finished. It is a cry of jubilation. What are you talking about, Jesus? It's finished. Every part of the scripture has been fulfilled. It's finished. What has he done? He has redeemed us from our sins. Look at redemption. It is in eternity that you were chosen before the foundation in the world. It was in eternity that he said he would adopt you as sons and daughters. It was in eternity that he declared that Jesus' blood would cleanse us whiter than snow. Every time you come in here, you need to open your mouth and say, God did not forget about me. God washed me with his blood. I've got to go to my seat, but I say he redeems you. And when we get to heaven, we're going to praise him. Praise him for your redemption. You can't lose it. You can't give it up. You're in his hand. No man can We have a little black book called the manual and in page 192 in the manual there's something there called the committal service may i argue for the sake of this that technically the thief has preached his eulogy because i know we love to sing the song my body belongs to god but your body technically belongs to God while God is in your body. Uh, but on the day that the spirit leaves the body, the body is actually owned by the ground. It then becomes now that we begin to see him move as every preacher has shared from feeling forsaken but now feeling trusted enough to commit. Look at the very end of emotions of Jesus within six hours. One minute I'm wondering where you're at and then the next minute I'm giving you my spirit. I wish you wave at a neighbor and say neighbor. Ain't no shame in my game. Reality has hit me that I wondered where he was at. But all how quick I got it together to realize and he walks with me and he talks and he tells me I'm done I am his own if someone would have stabbed him stay with me and his blood went out we still couldn't have been redeemed he had to get to a tree because the book says cursed is he that hangs on the tree he had to get to a tree so that I could be redeemed I know we say a last saying but technically this is the last prayer that Jesus prays he goes from praying father all of them that you have put in my hand don't let them go away he said these words that into your hand I give my spirit so at this committal service it is really an exodus motif he's literally saying I'm out of here he's literally saying deuces I've done my job wave at your neighbor and say neighbor I got good news for you within the next minute God is about to turn this into a committal service I've been to the doctor and they gave me a bad report but into your hand I put this report cause you were wounded from my transgressions and you were bruised because y'all ain't gonna like this part but I believe he didn't just die to forgive me of my sins I just don't believe Bishop Nixon he just died so I can walk on streets of gold 
But thank you, Bishop. If you go back to when he agreed to come, he agreed to come when fellowship had been broken between him and Adam. So he died so we could fellowship. He died so we could hang out. He died. Y'all ain't caught it yet. Just in case he wanted to come down and walk with me. He died. And he told the devil, I promise you, there will be a day and I'm going to pay you back. It's resurrection weekend. There's no reason for you to stay in the grave. By Sunday, you ought to be out. By Sunday, you ought to be dancing. By Sunday, you ought to be leaping. Today, for these next few moments, I want to talk to you about the patient Christ. Being born again would speak to divorcing a life you've already known. To take on a life prescribed in the Holy Manual. The Bible, Sister Stephanie, is not just about calling out your sin and your choices. But the Bible is more about instilling and implementing virtues and precepts in you so that you yourself will make the changes. Who can find a virtuous woman? You thought that the virtuous woman was a virgin, but that's not what the scripture is saying. Virtuous woman means a woman of precept and principle, a woman that's not for everybody, a woman who, who can find. In fact, there was one instance where we see uh, some type of typology of, of manifestation of maybe perhaps Jesus. It is found in the book of Daniel chapter number 3 where they are in the fiery furnace and Nebuchadnezzar looks in and says did not we put three young men bound into this fiery furnace? They say yes sir king. He said well why do I see four? You got to be so secure in your patience. <laughs> That you're willing to sit back and watch everybody else have a season. <laughs> and sit there confident knowing who you are and what you're capable of. <laughs> what kind of savior is this? <laughs> that wouldn't just leave the clothes <laughs> without being patient. Enough to fold them. <laughs> but Jesus <laughs> came in the room. <laughs> Not using a door, not using a window, and he breathed on them and told them, Receive the Holy Ghost. Somebody ought to tell the Lord. I need somebody on Farmer's Boulevard to tell my God
I'm so glad he loves me. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Maybe seated in the presence of the Lord, we want to take a moment again to greet and thank God for all of you today who have joined us in the in person. And it is so exciting to be in the household of faith and amidst the believers once more and again. We want to encourage every person that is viewing with us online to hit that share button. Those of you that have joined us on YouTube or via our website, would you please share the link to today's service? Today's service is certainly going to take us to another place in God. I don't know about you, but I come to go higher in God. When we were coming along, they said every round, goes higher and higher and we're excited about what God is doing in this day and in this hour. I want to take a moment amen to greet the saints of the Lord and to appreciate those amen that have been a part of our great fellowship and a part of our great church. We want to extend our amen uh, celebration and our Amen. Regards to all who are celebrating their birthdays this past week, the Lord has favored you with another trip around the sun, and for this we are grateful. We do want to acknowledge, amen, the birthday of our sister Crystal Miller, amen, who is a faithful online member. We say happy birthday to you, Crystal, and more life. Amen. We also want to acknowledge our sister Sharon McCluster, who has been a part of our ministries for some years now. Can we celebrate, amen, birthday blessings for sister Sharon? 
we extend a happy birthday to you, Sharon, and more life. Amen. And we are glad to celebrate, amen, with this young lady who has been faithful since her coming in to be a part of our ministry. We celebrate our sister, Kanika Jones. Amen. Another trip around the sun. Amen. Happy birthday to you, Kanika, and more life. We are so excited to do this, amen, to pause and do this each week for our membership because it is important for people who are a part of anything to know that they are seen, they are acknowledged, they are noticed, and they are appreciated. We want more life for you. I don't want you to just keep on living. I want you to have more life. That means every accoutrement that life has to offer, amen, every addendum brought to your life, I want you to have it all. Would you tell somebody, I want you to have all of it. I want you to have all of it. And so it is very important for us to continue, amen, on this journey, amen, and extending great grace, amen, and many blessings to all who are a part. We do want to acknowledge, amen, that those of you who are online, you will have an opportunity to join and become a part of this fellowship by texting the word census, C-E-N-S-U-S, -S, to 855-247-4676. If you text that word to that number, you will receive automatically a form, amen, that you can fill out, and it is that simple, amen. You can become a part of this great church and fellowship today. Can we say man? Amen. Before we leave this room today, I want them to give way for representation from our Mother's Board. Can we thank God for our Mother's Board? <laughs> Amen. And I want to say this. There are so many people who believe that you do not have a healthy church if you do not have young people in it. And while I agree, I want to add that what makes the church all the more healthy is its ability to be transgenerational. And we appreciate the mothers and the fathers of the church. Amen. And our mother's board, amen, had a wonderful rally that they had going on. And so a representative of our mother's board will address you before leaving the room today to appreciate your participation in that rally. One more time, let's thank God for our mother. Y'all stand up, all the mothers that are here today, stand up. Amen. Give God praise for our mothers. I don't hear y'all making enough noise. Amen. 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 I think I only see a couple that are not here today, but we praise the Lord for all of our mother's board amen being with us and in the land of the living we do want to acknowledge that we did take in a new member amen this past week and we want to acknowledge from the far rockaway area justin gillespie amen let's praise god for justin god bless you justin amen and welcome to the family we are excited to have you a part of our great church Amen. It is tithing time. It is tithing time. Amen. And we are grateful to the Lord for tithing. So we want to do that very quickly. We need every person. How many persons? If this is your week to bring tithe into the storehouse, let us prepare that now. Those of you that are watching online, if this is your week to bring tithe, amen, would you please prepare your tithe now? Amen. Comment in the comment section, tithe, and give the check marks so that we know you are accountable for tithing. You, you are accountable for tithing. And we praise the Lord for you. Amen. We praise the Lord for you. You know, giving makes life so much easier when we give unto the Lord. He gives seed to the sower. He gives bread to the eater. We are blessed when we give. And we give because we are blessed. Amen. All the tithers, all the tithers. Amen. If this is your week, join me on this side today. I always go to that side. You know, come on this side. Today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You don't mind walking, though. No. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We bless you in Jesus' name. We bless you in Jesus' name. Bless you, Jesus. Give me 
Bless us today, amen, in a solo, in a, well, not a solo, a selection, amen, they're going to come and bless us, and then we're going to be in the capable hands of, amen, one of my dearest friends, and I'm grateful for our friendship down through the years, amen. This is not anything that we had planned. I appreciate relationship and friendship where you can just put in a call and say, this is what I'm going to need. Because I was trying to do everything myself and then run, but wisdom said, I didn't want you to be shortchanged. Amen. Amen. So I wanted you to receive a word today that was going to carry you into this week. And I know that as we hear the word of God, we will be challenged, we will be transformed, and we will be trained, changed. One of the greatest voices in our land today is going to come and share a preacher par excellence. I often recall that there was a season when I was pastoring and the Lord called me from doing itinerant engagements. The Lord told me not to go and minister anywhere else outside of my own church and that was for a great deal of time I believe it was about three years this went on amen and so all the preaching I did I did with inner city and during that time amen I remember uh, traveling with Bishop Hill at the time Pastor Hill as he was moving about an itinerant and he said to me I want you to travel with me so that I'm not in bad company. Amen. And we did that up and down and all across and everywhere we could be, we were there. Amen. And I was glad to be there as a support to my friend. And I'm grateful that as you support your friend, how many of you know that God will do something special for you? One of the reasons why doors never open for people today is because they're not found supporting someone else who has doors open. One of the key ingredients to success is support. And so we're appreciative today that we are both pastoring, both standing strong in ministry, both serving. Amen. And both are blessed. I love my friend, and I want you to be very hospitable and kind to my friend. Can we thank God for the ministry of Bishop Darrell Hill? He is the senior pastor of the Powerhouse Church of New York. After the singers are finished, I want you to stand in respect of his office. If you're not already standing, please do so. And let's receive Bishop Darrell Hill. I love y'all. And I'll see you next week, I promise.
somebody open up your mouth and give God some praise come on you can do better than that come on you can do better than that come on give him some glory for the next couple of seconds come on come on come on come on he inhabits the praises of his people come on all of the ground sinks beneath me oh hallelujah oh hallelujah oh solid rock jesus is your name oh god hallelujah i need somebody who came with a mind to praise him to begin to open up your mouth and open up your spirit the holy ghost is already here come on bless him come on bless him oh hallelujah thank you jesus bless the lord on today glory to god while you're standing let's give god a hand praise for your illustrious pastor bishop darius jamel nixon come on you can do better than that great man of god truly i can talk all day long about our friendship and about him and about how the lord is using him in a mighty way but I'm sure you all know that your pastor is anointed. Amen? And it's an awesome thing when you can have leadership that is anointed. Amen? But we don't want you just to be appointed. We need you to be anointed. Amen? And so we think and praise God the anointing is on his life. Amen? And to this wonderful staff at this great church, to the ministers. Amen? Amen. To the mothers. Amen. Bless the name of God. Amen. And we think and praise God to Pastor God. Bless you. Amen. It's so good to see all of you on today. Get your Bibles while you're standing. We're not going to be before you long. Amen. But I want to share with you what thus saith the Lord on today. We want to acknowledge our, our online viewers. Amen. We ask that you like, comment, and share. Bless the name of God. We are excited to have you. Amen. And to all those, amen. This is family. Amen. So we came, amen, to celebrate with you and have church with you. Amen. Bless the name of God. Truly, we thank and praise God for this opportunity. Amen. Uh, to share with you what thus saith the Lord. We're going to the book of Leviticus, the uh, 10th chapter. Leviticus, the 10th chapter. We're going to commence reading at the first verse. And we're going to go down to round about the 11th verse. Once again, that's Leviticus 10, 1 through 11. Amen. When you have it, you may respond by stating, I have the word. I have the word. Amen. Leviticus 10, 1 through 11 reads on this wise. Now Nadab and Abihu the sons of Aaron each took his censer and put fire in it and laid incense on it and offered unauthorized fire. I'm reading from the English Standard Version, so it'll be slightly different. Unauthorized fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. And fire came out from before the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord has said among those who are near me. I will be sanctified. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace, and Moses called Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of Eziel the uncle of Aaron and said to them come near carry your brothers away from the front of the sanctuary and out of the camp so they came near and carried them in their coats out of the camp and Moses had said as Moses had said and Moses said to Aaron and Eleazar and Ithamar his sons do not let the hair of your heads hang loose because mm. your neighbor say you can't be loose in this presence do not tear your clothes, lest ye die, and wrath come upon all the congregation. But let your brothers, the whole house of Israel, be well the 
burning that the Lord has kindled. And do not go outside the entrance of the tent of meeting, lest you die. For the anointing all of the Lord is upon you. And they did according to the word of Moses. And the Lord spoke to Aaron, saying, Drink no wine or strong drink, you or your sons with you, when you go into the tent of meeting, lest you die. It needs you to be sober when you come before the Lord. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations. You are to distinguish between the holy and the common. It should not be a mixture. It should be a distinct difference between the holy and the common. And between the unclean and the clean. And you are to teach the people of Israel all the statutes that the Lord has spoken to them by Moses and the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. I want to use for thought it's required to come from the altar. It's required to come from the altar. You may be seated. It's required to come from the altar. One of the most dangerous postures we can ever fall into is a disposition of commonality. This place of commonality is where we become so comfortable that we no longer serve God with an urgency. We begin to function doing the work that he has called us to. The way we feel is most feasible for us thus losing zeal and becoming more careless as it pertains to the things of God. We no longer rely on God's instructions, but instead get into a place of routine. We tend to make excuses, no longer value time, and even try to change the order given to best suit us. Maybe it's the fact that we have been serving so long that we have begun to view our service to the church like we see our jobs. Could we have diluted our worship or reduced the magnanimous power of God's presence? Are we losing our respect for God? Or have we become so enamored with our gifts and abilities that we no longer need his presence? Have we learned so much that we no longer rely on him, but created a space where the created knows more than the creator? My brothers and sisters, I propose to you we need God. Need God, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5 through 8, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and a refreshment to your bones. We ought to rely on God. We ought to depend on God. That means that our service should be entangled with our prayer life. You cannot serve in the house of God. You cannot serve in the kingdom of God without having a prayer life. I know this is not most common because today we preach about getting houses and cars and getting land and more money, but the reality of it is we need to sanctify ourselves, prepare ourselves to be in the presence of God so that we can be anointed of God. We never want to fall into a place of commonality when it comes to God. We never want to lose our zeal for the things of God. We never want to get so comfortable in the house of God that we are no longer moved by his presence when he shows up. I want to be in a place whenever God shows up, I can detect his presence. 
Oh, look at your neighbor and say, I need his presence. I want to be able to detect his presence. Oh, I want to be able to move in his presence. I want to be able to be affected by his presence. I want his will to be done in my life. I don't ever want to become so common that I dilute the power of God from working in my life. Here in the text, my brothers and sisters, we deal with Nadab and Abihu, those who have been serving in the temple of God. This is not their first time in temple worship. This is not their first time dealing with the tent of meeting place. This is not their first time sacrificing and offering incense before the Lord. This is something that they have Done. This is something they've been read to do, but they have gone to the point where they started to rely on their abilities and not the presence of God. You, you need to understand in this particular time, they had to depend on the fire that came from heaven. Once a year, the high priest would go in and he would send up a sacrifice. And when he laid the sacrifice on the altar, fire would come from heaven and consume the offering. While the fire was burning on the altar, they had to take the fire from off the altar and use it for the other things in the meeting place, which means they used the same fire that fell from heaven to consume the sacrifice for burning incense. They used the same fire to light the torches in the tent. Understand this, the fire had to be the same type of fire. The fire had to come from the altar. They could not utilize any other type of fire, but they had to use the fire that came from heaven. I, I think the problem with our generation, our day and time is that we're using people who are more gifted than they are anointed. We, we were relying on our gifts and our abilities than the anointing of God. But if you're going to be effective in the kingdom of God, you have to have an experience at the altar. I, I remember coming up, they used to tell us you got to get to the altar before you did anything. Come to the altar in prayer and they would keep us at the altar praying and, and rocking before the Lord at the altar because we wanted the anointing. They weren't concerned about our gifts and our abilities and our talent. They was making sure that we had an anointing. I, I, they, they wanted to make sure that when we sung, we sung songs not to entertain the people but that the anointing of God will come in the building and make change happen in people's lives it's, it's, it's good to have a good sound but there's nothing like having a good sound with a fresh anointing from God that comes through prayer and fasting these two individuals Nadab and Abihu who was the sons of Aaron they were called to this service Nadab you understand his name means impressive it means impressive Impressive in appearance. In the Hebrew, it means impressive in appearance. So he looked good. He looked the part. He knew how to stand before the people. He looked the part. He was nicely adorned and polished. He looked good in appearance. He, he looked like he had something going on. He looked like he had power with God. He looked like he had a relationship. Oh, but touch your neighbor and say, when the rubber meets the road, you got to have more than just the look. Uh, in this hour, you need to have an anointing with God. He looked the part. Glory be to God. He knew how to talk. He knew what to say. He knew how to put things in order. He knew how to dress the altar itself. He looked apart but he lacked one thing and that was relationship with God uh, look at somebody and say I need a relationship with God I don't want anybody preaching to me laying hands on me prophesying to me because they looked the apart I need you to have a real anointing in this hour I'm going through too much to be playing games I'm dealing with too much to be playing games with folks I need somebody who has a real anointing with God Nadab he 
looked apart. He was impressive to look on. Oh, but there was an issue there. A by who names mean he is my father father and so he stood in the stance of his father because his father was the high priest because his father did it because those who went before him he knew what to do how to do it because of his connection oh but this is an hour in the body of Christ you got to have your own personal relationship with God look down your road and say you got to know how to get to God yourself uh, it's all right to have people pray for you it's all right to have people prophesying on you but every now and then you got to have your own personal relationship uh, where you know how to pray for yourself prophesy to yourself lay hands on yourself and believe God for your own healing uh, oh touch your neighbor and say neighbor I got my own anointing uh, I'm so glad to be sitting next to you but I got my own anointing uh, if you don't give God no praise it makes me no never mind uh, because I've been spending time with God because I got my own anointing my own anointing my own anointing my own anointing so one brother he looked apart he was impressive the other brother was moving in his father's likeness glory be to God nothing wrong with these they were instructed that when the fire came down you can make the incense but the fire has to come from the altar oh I need somebody who will say to your neighbor the church has got to get back to the altar schooling is good schooling is fine getting a degree and having education is good but we need you at the altar you can know Hebrew and Greek from the beginning to the end but if there is no anointing there will be no yoke breaking yoke destroying move of God I need somebody who's saying I'm looking for a move of God I'm not looking to be entertained I'm not looking glory be to God to be impressed by the words you speak I need an anointing is there anybody who wants an anointing I dare you open up your mouth and say Lord anoint me anoint me anoint me anoint I know you've been asking for cars you've been asking for blessings you've been asking for miracles but is there anybody who will say Lord give me an anointing I need an anointing somebody shout hallelujah glory be to God they they were they were supposed to get glory be to God the fire from the altar and then incense that they made with their own hands with spices they were to take that fire put it on the incense and their job was in the tent there to make some smoke they were to make sure that the room was filled with the smoke from the fire and the incense because God does not want you to rely totally on him touch your neighbor say you are responsible for the incense God is responsible for the fire you are responsible to do your part and God will do the rest Mm -hmm. you're responsible for so see some of you praying for miracles uh, and you're asking God to do things uh, and it seems like God is not doing anything it's not that God is not working it's because you're not doing your part God says I want to work uh, in, in agreement with you I want to partner with you I want to make you an agent in the earth uh, that when you start working with your hands uh, my anointing comes in and joins in with you uh, so that we can succeed in what we're doing uh, but you got to do something uh, you can't just sit there do nothing and expect God to move uh, touch your neighbor say neighbor your hands got to get to working uh, your hands got to get to producing uh, you got to show something uh, somebody shout hallelujah I know you don't like that I know you don't like that uh, I know you don't want to hear that because you want to sit down uh, in your seat of do nothing and expect God just to move and do whatever but touch a neighbor say God wants to include you in the miracle he wants to include you in the move of God so these were given the task to make the 
incense but they had to get the fire from off the altar instead of going to the altar these two Nadab and Abihu they find themselves drunk uh, one theologian said the reason why they messed up is because they were intoxicated by their own gifts and talent they were intoxicated with themselves they thought of themselves bigger and greater than they ought to and they were intoxicated they thought themselves to be wonders because they dealt with moving the presence of God in the tent. They thought they were something awesome because they had titles and positions. They thought they were better than everybody else because God showed up when they started moving. Oh, but look at your neighbor say, neighbor, oh, you're no better than I am. It ain't your title that moves the anointing. It's your relationship it ain't your position that moves the anointing it's your relationship I need somebody who got a relationship with God to begin to open up your mouth shout hallelujah and shift this house into the anointing come on open up open up open up open up open up glory be to God Leviticus 10 9 they were given instructions in Leviticus 10 and 9 they were told drink no wine or strong drink you and your sons with you when you go into the tent of meeting lest you die it shall be a statue forever throughout your generations so it was every generation that would perform in the tent that was required to get it this way in other words the requirements did not change uh, look at your neighbor say neighbor the requirements don't change the old generation had to do it the generation before them had to do it and guess what you got to do it they got it from the altar bin and we got to get it from the altar now or oh, touch your neighbor say age don't mean nothing the anointing is what matters oh they had to pray and fast for it then you gotta pray and fast for it now I know you're more educated but guess what you need an anointing somebody shout hallelujah make sure that you don't go before the Lord drunk and intoxicated glory be to God they prepared the incense they got ready to do their service in the house of God but something happened they were so drunk they didn't realize they didn't pay attention they tried to do it they tried to burn the incense without going to the altar they tried to perform their duty without prayer they tried to perform their duty without fasting they tried to perform their duty without spending time with God look at your neighbor say neighbor you must spend time with God you got to spend time with God to get somebody else they don't want to hear that but look at your neighbor say neighbor you must spend time with God not only when you come to church I'm talking Monday through Saturday you got to spend some time with God Mm. they get there in the tent a meeting place and the Bible says they begin to conjure up their own fire the Bible called it strange fire it was something it was burning but it wasn't God it was effective and worked on the incense but it wasn't God oh glory be to God oh something happened but it wasn't God it produce smoke but it wasn't God oh, touch your neighbor say neighbor I'm not impressed with your ability to mimic what God is doing I need the real authenticity of God's anointing oh, touch somebody say neighbor don't give me no no frill anointing I don't want a no frill anointing I need something authentic I need to know that you've been spending time with God 
Oh, somebody shout the anointing will make the difference. They prepare the incense. They prepare their own fire. And God got upset. The Bible says while they were there performing, glory be to God, sending up the smoke to cover the stench that came from the sin offering. Glory be, that's what the priests do. That when the priests go before the Lord, he's covering the scent of your sin. God don't want to smell your flesh. He don't want your flesh to show up. So he hides you in the smoke. That's what the anointing does. It hides you in God's presence. Oh, touch a neighbor, say neighbor. In other words, God don't want to see you. He don't want to see you. He want to see you covered. He want to see you covered in his presence. They got there in the presence. They produced the smoke. They produced the fire. And while they were there, the Bible says God got upset because there was something strange. It went up before the Lord. But God said, I don't identify with it. It went up before the Lord, but something was wrong with it. God said it's strange fire. And immediately the fire that they were supposed to use came out of the altar and consumed them immediately. Oh, look at your neighbor, say neighbor. I want to be in order with God. I want to be in line with what God is doing. Glory be to God. And the Bible says in Leviticus 9, and Moses and Aaron went into the tent of meeting. And when they came out, they blessed the people and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. And fire came out from before the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the pieces of fat on the altar. And when all the people saw it, they should, they shouted and fell on their faces. Touch a neighbor, say neighbor. When there's a real anointing, you ain't got to pump people up into worship. When there's a real anointing, you ain't got to push and pry people into praise. Oh, when it's real, people who've been spending time with God know how to identify with the anointing. Oh, look at somebody and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I feel the glory in this house. What are you saying, Bishop? That means whatever you're going through, the glory is already here whatever you're dealing with the glory is already here all you gotta do is do your part touch somebody say neighbor do your part if you gotta open your mouth open it if you gotta leap leap for it if you gotta jump jump for it but whatever you do don't sit there and let the glory pass you by God said it's time for worship oh, can I get about five of you who would open up your mouth in worship open up your mouth and release worship <laughs> what the Lord is saying to us this is the hour that you must have relationship with God this is the hour that you can't sit still and do nothing that you gotta work for the anointing this is the hour we gotta bring back fasting and praying to the church this is the hour that we gotta get serious about the things of God this is the hour that we can't get too common that we become used to the presence that we are not affected by his presence this is the hour that we must learn how to reach into praise and worship grab somebody by the hand and say neighbor I want the power of God y'all ain't gonna have no charge get somebody else on the other side and say neighbor I want the power of God because I need 
God to move on my behalf. I need the anointing. Y'all don't want to have church, but I feel the anointing in the room. Get your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever it is you need God to do, there's an anointing in this house for it. Whatever you need God to perform, it will be done. But the anointing is in the house. I need somebody who will begin to open your mouth and give God the glory. So God told Moses to raise up two of his other boys and prepare Ithamar and his other son and make sure you warn them. The first thing he says is you cannot cry over the loss of your two brethren. Make sure you tie your hair up. Glory be to God. Make sure you don't come before the presence of God. Loops and locks. Make sure you're stoic and put together. Grab somebody and say neighbor. In other words, God wants you to respect his presence. Don't come in my presence any old type of way. Don't show up any old type of way. Because you need God to move on your behalf. There's a way you got to show up in the spirit. I need somebody look down your row and say neighbor I came to get a blessing from the Lord. I can't sit still. I can't be quiet. I gotta be dressed in praise. Dressed in worship. I need somebody who would open up your mouth and let the Lord have his way. The next thing he told him, he says, don't show up intoxicated or drunk. Make sure you're prepared. Make sure you're not intoxicated. Make sure you're stoic. Make sure you're ready for a move of God. I need somebody. Grab your neighbor by the hand. Shake it real good and say neighbor. I came here for a move of God. I need a miracle by tomorrow and I can't sit still. I need a blessing by tomorrow and I need an anointing to move on my behalf. Get somebody by the hand and say oh get ready for eyes haven't seen and ears have not heard neither has it entered the heart of men what God is about to do for you and your house I need somebody leave your seat touch me people and say neighbor the anointing is in the house whatever it is you need is in the building whatever you desire is in the room loose your praise right now loose your worship give them glory give them glory give them glory give them glory I need somebody who to the altar you think the altar is about a building you think the altar is about a place but the altar of your heart the altar is where you meet your God the altar is where you commune with God the altar is 
where you get out of self and jump in the spirit. The altar is where expectation is developed. I need somebody to make an altar right where you are and meet God. How do I meet him? He inhabits the praise of his people. Get your neighbor and say neighbor. Build your own altar. Build your altar. Build your altar. Build your altar. altar. What are you saying? Whatever you need to do. Build your altar. If it's praise, then praise. If it's worship, then worship. If it's jumping, then go to leaping. Y'all standing there. Powerhouse, build it. Powerhouse, build it. In a city, build it. Get to altar. Build it up. Build it up. Build it up. Somebody shout. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Listen. They messed up because it was about their appearance and their connection had nothing to do with their experience with God. You want an anointing, you have got to learn how to get in God's presence. That's what God is saying to our generation. You're gifted. You're talented. But there's some fire missing. And I'm not saying you're not burning. You're burning. But it's a strange burn. I'm not saying you're not on fire. You're on fire. There's something strange about it. Because whenever you minister and it's about you and not about him, you done made your own fire. Touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, we're not going to make our own fire tonight. We're going to get it from the altar. I need somebody right now to loosen praise right now. God wants to do something in this place. I know you're tired in your body, but I dare you release a praise right now. We can't play no games with it. Release something right now. God says, I want to show up. I want to heal. I want to set free. I want to deliver. Come on, loose it, loose it, loose it, loose it. Loose it, loose it, loose it. There's a release. 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 Come on, come on. I feel an anointing. I'm, come on. Come on, loose it. Loose it, loose it. Loose it. Loose it. I need somebody who's ready for a breakthrough. I need somebody who's ready for a breakthrough. Loose it in here. Go ahead, start walking the house. Release it. Do it like the old church. Walk the aisle. Move the anointing. Come on, y'all. Come on, press. Come on, press. Come on, press. There's an anointing. There's an anointing. There's an anointing. Come on, I need the gifted folk. I need the anointed folk. I need the folk who move it in the anointing. I need the folk who need breakthrough. I need the folk. Come on, get get the altar ready. Get the altar ready. Come on, get it ready. Come on. Come on. Come on. Some of y'all just standing. Get out of there. Get out of there. 
Some of y'all just standing. There's a move of God the altar. There's a move of God at the altar. Come on. There's a move of God. Come on, get your fire. Get your fire. You got your incense, but you need fire. You need fire. Come on. Break into it. Come on. Break into it. Come on. The devil is alive. The devil is alive. Come on. There's a breakthrough. There's a breakthrough. There's a breakthrough. There's a breakthrough. Come on, y'all. Come on. Just a little bit more. Come on, press. Press it. Press it. Press it. Press it. Press it. The fire is falling. 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 Come on, up down. Come on. Get what you need. Get what you need. Get what you need. Yes. Get what you need. Get what you need. Come on. Travail. Come on. Travail. Come on. Get Come on, Jabel. Yes, we feel us. We feel us. We feel us. We feel us. Come on, get it. He wants to hear you. for a loved one some of you need God to go into a hospital room some of you standing for your sons and your daughters some of you standing come on in proxy for loved ones there's a breakthrough there's a breakthrough God sent you here this afternoon to get a breakthrough for your house this for your bloodline this for your bloodline it ain't about you this for your bloodline get that breakthrough get that breakthrough Get that breakthrough. Huh? Come on, y'all. Huh? Pressing it. 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 Huh? Pressing it huh? Some of you need a refilling. Come on, come on. Oh, yeah, that I won't see. God said, I'm going to do it again. God said, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to refill it again. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to bring back the zeal. I'm going to bring it back. Come on, in a city. Come on, God said, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. And the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. I'm going to do it again. But I need you at the altar. I need you at the altar. I need you to veil it. I need you to veil it. Come on, y'all. Get to it. Get to it. Get to it. I need you back in your tongues. I need you back. I need your back. I need your back in consecration. I need your back to it. You just can't wear it. You can't put it on. Come on, I need you back where you used to be. Back where you used to be. I need you there. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. I'm trying to pull you up. I'm trying to pull you up. I'm trying to do a new thing. Come on, y'all. Get to the altar. Do what you gotta do. Huh? Oh, Shataya. Huh? I got souls huh? that's assigned to this house. Huh? I'm waiting on you. Huh? I'm waiting on you. Huh? Get your fire back. Huh? Get your fire back. Huh? Get your seal back. Huh? Get your desire back. Huh? Come on, y'all. Huh? You lost your love for it. Huh? You lost it. Huh? You've been through hell. Huh? You've been through hard stuff. Huh? You lost a lot of people. Huh? A lot of people walked away from you, but it's all right. God said, 
says, I got a new thing. I got a new. I got a new. I got a new. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. There's an anointing. Come on. Oh, yeah, the Boho Shire. He can get a man to give the Boho. You can get a Boho Kayada. He can get a man to see. He can get a Boho Shire. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. This ministry is prophetic. This ministry is prophetic. This ministry is prophetic. As the bishop goes up, you go up. You go up. The Lord is saying, I want you up. I want you up. I want you up. I want you up. And what didn't work last year is going to work this time. Come on, don't you give up. Come on, come on. Forget about the naysayers. Forget about the talkers. What didn't work before is going to work now. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. I need somebody who will receive this anointing. Who would receive this oil. Who would receive this fire. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's what he wants. He wants another level of yes. He wants another level of yes. That's what he wants. Come on, y'all. Come on, preachers. Come on, missionaries. Come on, deacons. Come on. Come on, leaders. Come on. Come on. Get to your level. Get to your yes. Get to your yes. Get to your yes. We will help the bishop build. We will help the bishop grow it. Come on, get back to it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes.
Somebody being healed right now. Somebody being healed in their heart, healed in their mind. Somebody being healed right now. I don't care who you are. If you need to come, come to the altar. They're prepared to minister to you. Bless the name of God. Yes, Lord. Somebody, let's give God a hand praise. The Lord is good. Thank you, Jesus. 
listen, I, I wasn't asked to do this. I know you have already given and I know this may not be custom for Sunday. But I believe in sacrifice and I believe in sowing. I do. I've been able to do all that I've been able to do because of sacrifice and sowing. I believe even in the realm of business, God has given me favor because of sacrificing and sowing. Bless the name of God. And this is what I want to do. I'm, I'm going to sow an extra $200. And this is what I need you to do is get you a seed of $40. Of $40. That's what I need you to do. And soon as you get that $40 seed, if you're using your phone, other apparatus, anybody you can take advantage of doing a cash app or Giveify. I want you to come and touch the altar once you get it. That $40. I want you to come and touch the altar. And 40 is the number of preparation. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise his What a holy mighty name. outpouring of God's spirit <sighs> wow. did we feel in this place. You know, before we do anything, I know we cut out and came right into this after show right while the man of God, Bishop yeah. Daryl Hill, Hallelujah. was giving an opportunity for those of us that are here in yeah. this atmosphere. We don't want you to miss out, those of us that are in the virtual sanctuary. There's about 70 of us still here. That's right. We don't want you to miss out on this opportunity. Get in on this seed. That's right. If you know that that worship, that moment at the altar, this word was yeah. for you, you need to sow. That's right. Don't think about it. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. So, so now. as you sow now, so that's now. what it is. As you sow now, I believe that God will manifest on your behalf. That's yeah. your way to agree with this word. It's a simple seed of 40. That's it. It's a simple seed of 40. And isn't it so powerful that as we talked about this relationship that we have to that's personally right. build with God, that's the right. man of God would ask us to sow a seed of 40. What is the number 40? Process. My God. My God. <laughs> Yeah. 40 is the number of process. It is the agreement with this word today. Why won't you sow? That's right. I see that there are so many that are already putting that word done in that green check mark. As our Deacon Damien begins to give you greetings and blessings, we want to make sure that you are sowing. 
hit that That's right. green check mark and give us a word done if you are agreeing with today's word and sowing that forty dollars seed. My God, Deacon my Damien. God, listen. Uh, some if you don't know who I am, I'm Deacon Damian Dixon. But I feel such an urgency about sowing this seed of forty. Yes, sir. I believe that when Bishop Hill just said that they, you have to bring the incense. He'll provide the fire. Yes. Let this be your sacrificial sign to say, Lord, I'm bringing this to you. Now apply the fire. I'm so uh, in my 40 right now. I'm so in mind as well. I need you to do this with an urgency. Yes, sir. There's more to come. The man of God has declared it. I mean, what can we say about <laughs> Bishop Hill today? Coming in is required to come from the altar. You know, I, I thank God for history. Yeah. And over oh, 10 yes, years yes. ago. Oh, yes, yes. All right. Yeah. Bishop Hill preached for a conference uh -huh. that we had in Utica, New York. Wow. And I still remember that word. Kept by the power of God. Kept by the power of God. And today I feel like we got part two of that. Yeah. It's required. You've been to around come here a long time, Elder Z. Woo! Bishop Hill, you didn't have to do that to us today. My God, when he started to pull out and then he broke down what the meaning of those names meant, the, the, the looks impressive, the mm -hmm. look of it. How many of us have fallen victim to having the look but lacking the fire? I've had those seasons where, you know, you start to operate out of your know-how. But yes, what sir. a dangerous place to operate out of. Yeah, and you know what, Bishop Hill, he educated us to say that sometimes the know-how is just burnout. Yeah, yeah. The know-how meanings that there's a strange fire burning, Woo! and it is our responsibility to get back to the altar where the anointing dwells. Yeah. Elder Z, don't, don't push me, because I feel like you're about to do part three. Get back to the altar yeah. where the anointing dwells. And isn't it so powerful that you don't have, because, you, you know, we're still talking to the, the, the virtual That's sanctuary. right. You don't have to be in the in person to get to the altar. My God. He said God. get to the altar right here. There you go. My God. That's it. Build it in Woo! your own house. Yeah. Build it inside of your own temple. Because as you build that altar from within. Yeah. He will manifest without. Yeah, that's right. My that's God. right. See, that's the, that. And I love that you said that because guess what? I can go to my altar at work. Yes, sir. I can go to my altar while I'm walking through the grocery store, while yes, I'm sir. driving my car. I can access my altar. It is important that you build up that altar again. Yeah. There is fire falling. Catch it. See, when we get we get to the physical place. We equate the altar to the physical building, but no, no, no. There's there's something down on the inside of us. My yes, God. And I, I'm so excited. I'm so glad that God has allowed it to be so. Mm. Get back to building those altars. And you know what was so powerful? You know, oftentimes when I've read that scripture or heard this particular yeah, passage yeah. preach, when I've heard about that intoxication, you know, there was many that said that, yeah, you know, this is why you can't go to the bar and yeah. be drunk. It wasn't just that they were Ooh. physically intoxicated, yeah. but in 2024, there are so many of us that are intoxicated by our own gifts and abilities. Self drunk. We so wonderfully made, and we're so, so wonderful. We're so up, and we we have on these garments, these priestly garments, and I'm drunk. The I'm Bible intoxicated. Says that we are as unto filthy rags. That's it. So that's, that's it. why I should not be drunk. Off of my own gifts. My God, my God. But say, Lord, if it not your Ooh. hand and your anointing upon my abilities, yeah. it would not be received in your my sight. My God, how dare we come into his presence and think that what we have is on our own accord. Woo. He has given us these things. He has put down before the foundations of the world what your plan, your purpose, and your gifting would be. But I am nothing. There is no water. He is the well yes. that I draw from. My God. He is the source of all strength. All power belongs to God. I'm telling you, when you have that reflection up, Bishop Hill held up a mirror today. Yeah. And how many of you can get in that comment section and say, I'm sober now? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm sober, sober now. And I'm building my Woo! altar. Can we have 30? Because we still got about 60 of That's us it. in this after show. Can we have 30 of you type in, I'm building That's my it. altar? If you would write that, I believe that God will do something special yeah. for us this week. Just 30. There's 60 of us here, but if we get 50% of that, 
just 30 persons that are still in agreement. My Some Lord. of us gave an agreement, and now we're typing an agreement. That's right. I'm building my altar. That's, That's it. That's my responsibility. That's it. Because Bishop Hill said it's not just a one-sided exchange. The only way for there to be an exchange yeah. is if two parties are involved. That's it. What does the Bible say? If two or three are gathered. Are gathered. And God wants us to be name. in partnership. That's it. With this building of That's an altar. It. That's it. You can't, you can't build nothing drunk. Mm -mm. You gotta have sobriety when building. Yes, sir. You you have to have your but you can't you can't map out your altar's blueprint being inebriated. No, sir. You have to be strong, sober in this. Yeah. Listen, we're going back to building. I li build those altars like never before. There's more to come. And I believe that as you build and you make that sacrifice, like you've done with sowing that $40 uh, seed, that God will start showing you that the miracle signs and wonders are unlimited to those unlimited. who obey his word. Yeah, and look, you, you talked about sowing. Sister Terry, we see you sow. Come on. Uh, Brother Donovan, he's sowing. Mother Verna is sowing. Uh, Sister Tasia Clark, she's sewing. Me, me and Deacon Damien, we done get on it. Mother Diane Everett. So, that's what it's all about. Yeah. We have to sew on the word. The, I believe that there is somebody that's watching the replay of this after that's show. That's right. And you need to Glory sew. To God. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. This might just be the seed that God needs to seal the last sealant of your altar. My God. The last brick My God. of the altar that God has tried to build yeah. within you. So today. Yeah, yeah. So that seed of process yeah. and watch God work on your behalf. You know, there, there is a mighty outpouring that God yeah. has done in this place today. I just yeah. can't wait to just go home and watch the replay. My God. And I want to create a space where God can meet me. Yes, sir. That Bethel place. Yeah. I want to create His that. House. My God. I want to create that yeah, yeah, because that we get so far from it. But I'm telling you, as we begin to build those altars, and I don't want you to take it in the literal sense, mm -hmm. building that altar, yeah. getting back on your face, uh, yeah. getting back on your, in your prayer closet, having that prayer chair in your house. Bishop yes. has a prayer chair yeah. in his house. And I kept saying, you know, when I get my own, when God allows me to have my own home, I'm going to get a prayer chair. Do you know I have not put up a prayer chair? Wow. But when I tell you I'm about to go to Raymore and Flanagan, when I get out of here, <laughs> I'm about to create a space where nothing else can sit yeah. but his presence. Yeah, yeah. My commune place, they're my Bethel it. space. They're building it. My yeah, God. Yeah, Sister Taj Mladi and Father Merritt, they said they're building their altar. Sister Rochelle, she's building it. They're still sewing. Yeah, yeah. Still sewing. Sister Terry's building it. Jen Denton is building it. Angela Martin is building it. Mother Diane is building it. Yeah. Glory to God. Michelle is building it. Angela Martin is building it. Mother Adele is. We are building yeah. this altar. We're building yeah. this altar. You know, it almost felt like Bishop Hill was in Sunday school today. I'm trying to tell you. He really was. That's the power of God bringing confirmation. Because in Sunday to school, we day. were talking about the righteous king. Yeah. And we talked about how important it was to know God for yourself. Yeah. Isn't that like God I'm to tap you. in yeah. to the various platforms? This is why this is why yeah. you that you hear us say it every week. Don't starve That's your right. spirit That's right. of opportunities to grow. That's right. Whether it's the prayer, vitamin, Monday through Friday at Listen. 7 a.m., Wednesday night, Bishop started a new series <laughs> in the portal. Now I had to go back and watch the replay because I was at work now. We were talking about that carnality out. and the spiritual, the Woo. battle, the war. Yeah. You don't need to miss out. You're starving your flesh when you, your spirit. Yeah. Your flesh is feeding, but you're starving your spirit when you miss out on opportunities. Join the portal. That's it. That's what you got to do. That's a, and, it, and I'm telling you, it's such a, it's, it's another investment. Yeah. It's not a sacrifice. It's an investment. Yeah. And you can be sure that when you get in that portal, you're going to get the unadulterated word of God. I'm so happy that even with the portal, we have other things going on within this great ministry. Yes, sir. The daughters of Sarah. Yeah. Uh, they pray every Saturday morning. We have the sons of Jacob. Every Sunday morning, the every men Sunday. are gathering, praying to the God that we serve, yes, believing sir. him and, 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 and petitioning for our communities and our family. And then right Right after that Sunday school, with these instructors that are that are well versed in the word, but have an anointing. Yes, sir. Bishop Hill said you have to have an anointing. Schooling is good, and and having those talents are good, but you have to have any have an anointing. That's what yes. destroys the yoke. Yes, and you know, on top of all of these platforms, did we not hear Bishop call out Brother Justin 
who is one of our newest members. And Brother just Justin. in case you didn't know, Brother Justin, if you're out there, we love you. We're so happy that you're That's with right. us. You are now a part of the Sons of Jacob ministry. He was one of the souls that came to Christ the other Sunday. Wow. Wow. Yes, with Sister Eva and her family. Look at that. He came to Christ, and not long after is he now joining the ministry. That's right. That's what it's all about. That's, That's why you got to text census if you haven't done so already. That's if right. you do not have a church to call your home, text census. You don't have to be homeless. Mm -hmm. You Come don't have on. to be uh, uh, without covering. You yeah. need covering in That's this right. because sometimes you'll get the refueling like we did today, yeah. and you'll lose it in two days. That's right. Rest the nomad. Come home. Mm -hmm. Come home. Come home. There's a place. There's a place. There's a place where you are welcome. There's always room at the table. Yes, I'm sir. happy for you, uh, Brother Justin. I cannot wait to, to to embrace you when I see you again. I cannot wait to see you in the in-person gathering. But until we see you, we're going to still shout you out. Yes, Welcome sir. to the family. Welcome to the family. Yeah. This has been awesome today. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm really going to go home and watch the replay all over again. I have to. <laughs> I have to. And you know what? We got to watch the first part because what kind of leader would Talk we about have it. that goes on assignment but attends to the house before he before goes. Before he goes. You know what it was? Let me tell you something. I'm so happy that we have a father like Bishop mm -hmm. because it's kind of like when, when, when that parent is getting ready to go and, and they explain, listen, I'm getting ready to go, but this needs to be done and that needs to be do done and make sure that's done before I get back. And his instructions were to receive the word of God. Yes. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, the inner city church have obeyed the chieftain today. Bishop, we received the word, yes. but I want you to know that we are praying for you as you are in, in route yes. to your assignment right now. Yeah, I believe that Bishop is not far from the comments. No. The 50 of us that are still here, can we all, I'm not going to ask for a percentage, I need Everybody that's still that's with right. us in this after show, show some love to our bishop, Bishop Darius Jabel Nixon. That's our bishop. We love him. Love we're you, bishop. praying for travel and mercies, that's and we're right. praying that the people of God strap in because the oil is on the way. I'm trying to tell you. The oil. I need everybody. I'm waiting for you to do it before we log off. I need you to show some love to you know, our bishop. I'm. I, you know, I watch Shark Tank. Come on. And I came up with a, 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 a device. <laughs> what was that? It's called the Holy Ghost Holder. <laughs> and let me tell you what it is. Explain it's it. seat belts for the pews. <laughs> Because when the whole when that man of God walked through, you're gonna need something that's gonna lock you in. Because I told y'all. You will hurt yourself. I don't know if I would have Holy that. Ghost Holders. Holy Ghost Holders HGH. No. Now, now, wait, that's 2%. <laughs> I give them 2%. I'm telling you, Bishop, we love you. Yes, Y'all better get ready because the word is sure to come. Philly, get ready. The man of God is on his way. And I believe that as the word of yeah. God is going, the anointing is not far from it. The anointing it. is not Hallelujah far from it. Hallelujah to God. It. This has been awesome today. We've had so many great moments to share and this week, yeah. I believe it's going to be a blessed week. And shout out to the Powerhouse Church for yeah. coming with their leader. Come on here. I'm telling you, Bishop Hill has always said that he is our uh, ass assistant, assistant pastor. pastor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, but sir. when we get to, when the saints get together, it is nothing like fellowshipping with the people of God. Yes. Bishop Hill, he done tore this church up today. Now we got to have to go. When we build our altar, we got to build the church back up, too. <laughs> you know the chairs probably all, all over the place. place. And everybody, you know, everybody <laughs> slumped walking to the car and yeah. still speaking in tongues. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm telling you, meet us back in this place. Yes, sir. Yes, we can't sir. wait to see you. And if you listen, if you're not going to meet us in this place, meet us in this place. Get in the in-person <laughs> gathering. Sister Michelle said, Holy Ghost. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, hold it now, Sister Michelle. Don't take my idea. <laughs> if you're hearing anywhere, now, if I go to Canal Street and they're selling Holy Ghost no. holders, I'm going to lose it. Now, that's what I'm going to no, flip the table. my problem is going to be if they get them in colors. <laughs> now, the, you know that's where I'm at. The blood red. And you, and then you know if the daughters of Saturday get it, they're going to be dazzled. Oh, no, no, no. I will have <laughs> other mama doing it. Other mama, you won't do it. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, if I go to Target <laughs> and I see Holy Ghost holders in there, now that's when I lose. We it. might have to look into that. Next I'm about to, I got I got the patent right here. I've been Somebody drawing it up. Wow. I've been drawing it up. We need a contract. How much is she? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, meet us in this we place next you. week. We're going to we see love you. Next week.